Many years ago, getting to the end of a game would be an achievement in and of itself. Today, however, platforms like Xbox and Steam have their own achievements, and even PlayStation wants you to win a bunch of trophies like you're trapped in some kind of never-ending school sports day. Ostensibly, these awards are to reward you for exploring the game, trying different approaches, and giving you something to play towards beyond finishing the main campaigns. In actuality, they're a pain in the butt that somehow compels you to pick up 420 flags rather than get on with killing story-important targets. Not all achievements add to your experience. Here are seven ways they ruined your game, but we're spoilers for the following. Having an achievement pop up at the right moment can be immensely satisfying, a brilliant bit of punctuation to completing a difficult or time-consuming task. However, timing is everything, and should that timing be off, it can really ruin the moment. It's frustrating to finally finish a challenge, only to have to wait for the achievement to, for instance, register and pop because Xbox Live is being slow. But what's even worse is when the achievements themselves are programmed to pop at terrible times. One prime example of this is in the 2018 remake of Shadow of the Colossus, where you were given a trophy for each colossus you kill. It's a pretty significant feat to defeat something so huge, so it makes sense that the developers would want to reward you. Unfortunately, these trophies popped up at a slightly awkward time, meaning the moment the colossus would fall to the ground was usually interrupted with... Sorry, huge story moment where you're supposed to stop and think, am I the real monster? Should I really be killing this creature? But our PlayStation wants us to award us for killing this creature. Okay, now I'm even more conflicted. The original game released in 2005, before PlayStation trophies existed, so developers didn't have to think about where a trophy would need to pop up. This didn't leave any room in the remake to allow the PS4 to register your win and show the trophy before the gut-wrenching cutscene kicked off. Oh, way to ruin the moment, PlayStation. And how about when achievements go off too soon and spoil the upcoming story? For example, in Undersea Big Daddy Sim Bioshock 2, as you made your way to an escape pod at the end of the game, you were awarded with the achievement Heading to the Surface. If you were curious enough to pause the game and read more about it, you'd see the description read, Head to the Surface on the side of Sinclair's escape pod, giving away the fact that you weren't going to make it inside the pod as planned. Moral of the story? Just play the story. Games often like to leave things up to player choice, allowing you to approach situations from different angles or choose how a character interacts with the world. Are you wounded, Williams? A few scrapes and burns, nothing serious. The others weren't so lucky. Achievements, however, do not allow you to try different things, as often you will be rewarded for playing purely one way. In the Dishonored series, which is supposed to be all about approaching a situation however you want, the achievements reward you heavily for going through the games without being seen, and without murdering a single person. For example, on Xbox, the game's first achievements, Ghost Shadow and Clean Hands, reward you for this with the princely sum of 160G. This might be perfect for stealth lovers, but for everyone else it's a frustrating exercise in constant quick saves, frequent reloading after being spotted, and grumpily stuffing unconscious people into bins. Instead of organically playing the game, adapting your playstyle as you go through different levels and discover new abilities, you end up sticking to the one method and one set of tools that will help you stealth your way through to that precious achievement. This often cuts off a lot of cool things. For instance, in the first game, you can summon swarms of rats to eat your enemies. But if you do this, your clean hands achievement is gone, even if the deaths are actually caused by dozens of tiny rat hands instead of your actual hands. I mean, I'm just saying. 
So in a series where your lethal powers include turning into a smoke monster and terrifying your enemies, there are a bunch of achievements actively telling you not to do that very cool thing. The fortress have End of road for you. Another prime example is games with morality systems, where what you do or say can affect the story and how the world perceives you. This is interesting in theory, but with the addition of achievements that reward you for reaching the extreme ends of the game's moral spectrum, you often stop yourself from going with your gut. Instead of facing interesting moral dilemmas and mixing up your answers to reflect how you feel, you end up picking the same obviously good or obviously bad option every time in order not to break your streak. Or if the choice isn't obvious, you leave the game to search a forum to check which conversation option is the correct one for your playthrough. Yet yeah, Jacob, hold on one second, I'll, I'll be right back. Which choice, Jacob? Yep, yeah, right, right with you, Jacob. If anything can improve a wonderfully crafted single-player adventure game, it's tacking on a multiplayer mode so that you can have 13-year-olds calling you a noob while you're forced to listen to another player's highly compressed drum and bass music. Mate, it's not drum and bass via your mic, it's tin and whistle, is what I would have said to that kid if he could have heard me over that drum and bass. So a few years ago, everyone and their mum decided to add multiplayer modes to single player games, such as Assassin's Creed, Tomb Raider, and even The Last of Us, all of which were so popular that they're still regularly featured in the latest release. Oh wait, no, they're not. Still, whether or not they were any good and will fight for the Assassin's Creed multiplayer until our dying breaths, players were encouraged to play modes they weren't necessarily interested in with achievements. Yes, sweet gamer score and trophies were tied to the multiplayer, hoping to tempt single players into making the jump to playing with oh, other people online. <laughs> Even worse, alongside Reach a Certain Level awards, games often included multiplayer achievements where lots of specific criteria had to be met and were highly dependent on the behaviour of other players. Even fairly simple achievements could be thwarted by other players' preferences, and not just their preference of staying alive over you getting delicious XP. This could involve having to play as a certain character, which could be incredibly difficult if someone else kept selecting said character. The pirate's bravery achievement in Assassin's Creed Revelations is a million times more frustrating to get when GitGood1337 keeps selecting the required privateer character before you, forcing you to wait until the next match for another try. Another achievement in Assassin's Creed Revelations entitled Explorer wanted you to finish a session of each game mode in multiplayer. Sounds easier, you might think, but what game mode you played was also determined by everyone else you were playing with, as it was democratically voted for at the start of each round. Get stuck in a lobby with a bunch of people who only want to play deathmatch, and you can kiss goodbye to trying out the steal the artifact mode. And God help you if you had to do anything more specific. The least one achievement in the whole of Assassin's Creed Revelations, Carnival, wanted you to stay blended for three minutes during a wanted session in Siena. So you had to make sure your fellow players helped you select the right map, the right game mode, and didn't find you for three minutes. And heck, that was stressful enough to ruin your experience in a tactile multiplayer that actually turned out to be good. Not all single player games were that lucky. Still, there is one way for players to avoid the temptation of terrible multiplayer achievements. Don't pick up the game until its servers become so empty that you can't find a game to join. Guess I'll never get those achievements now. On the plus side, no interacting with other people. Yay! One thing that is regularly touted as a selling point for video games is their replayability. However, when you turn this from you can play this over and over again to you must play this over and over again in order to fully experience the game, it can be a little daunting, especially for players with little spare time. Yet, plenty of games create achievements that encourage you to play them through again. For example, as previously mentioned, many achievements want you to play the game a certain way, and this is often because they have multiple outcomes that require multiple playstyles to get them all. Others have achievements tied to New Game Plus, a mode that lets you replay a game with all the upgrades from your first run through, so you can really show those jerks who gave you a hard time the first time round. 
Some award you simply for trying New Game Plus, but others force you to give it a proper go by making you finish it, or sneakily making certain achievements simply impossible to gain in a single playthrough. For example, in The Last of Us 2, there aren't enough resources to fully upgrade all your skill trees and weaponry in a single try, so you must do so in the second playthrough to gain the trophies, which is totally what you want to do after, avoiding spoilers, the end of the game that has left you a shattered emotional husk who never wants to play a video game ever again. And some achievements are even meaner, rewarding you for playing a game on the highest difficulty, but locking that difficulty mode away behind the easier modes. And don't get us started on achievements that don't give you the achievement for finishing on easy when you finished it on hard. What? I finished this on hard. You think I couldn't have handled it on easy? Give me some credit, game. One thing that has plagued video games since even before the advent of gamer score and trophies is collectibles. 90s platformers of old were so covered in things for you to pick up that you almost couldn't see the ground under them and no we are not exaggerating, you are shut up. The reward for collecting all of them back then was the knowledge of a job well done, and a game world probably much tidier than your bedroom at the time. But even now, the allure to collect things is still there, but mainly thanks to the additional reward of an achievement. Yes, you might think it's a waste of time to pick up all those feathers in Assassin's Creed 2, but what about for a tasty 30G? Or a bronze trophy? Man, stingy on PlayStation. However, some collectibles involve more effort. For example, in The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt, in order to have a complete deck of 120 Gwent cards, you not only have to hunt down merchants across the land, but actually play Gwent? With a bunch of rando NPCs? Look, I'm sure it's fun and all, but I bought this monster hunting game to, you know, hunt monsters. Still, even those that you just find lying around can be annoying enough, whether they distract you between story missions whenever you see them in the corner of your eye, or they compel you to run around after you finish the game like a glorified Roomba. Or, worst of all, is when a game doesn't tell you there are collectibles until it's too late, so you have to replay the whole thing to pick up all the things you missed because you didn't know you had to smash every doll in the game. Yes, that was my second playthrough. Yes, I was mad. Oh dear, the dwarves have lost all their mining tools, and they can't work without them. Could you help find the missing tools? Ooh, thank you. Everyone has games that are guilty pleasures, except me. The Barbie Horse Adventure series is better than Dark Souls, you casuals, and I will die on that hill. Still, trophies and achievements are something that your friends can look up on your profile, giving away what games you've been playing. So if you've been playing a lot of Disneyland Adventures, your friends will see all the achievements you've unlocked, and get a rough idea of just how many hours you've put into running around the Magic Kingdom hugging princesses. I'll never forget you. Maybe you can try and say it was your imaginary younger sibling, or just own it, because why not? It's the happiest place on earth, and I deserve to be happy. What a lovely hug. Problem is, even with supposedly cool games, there are achievements that are pretty embarrassing to have been awarded. Our friends over at Outside Xbox have covered many of these, and they come in two main forms. Some mock your behaviour, for example Yakuza 0, which lets you watch videos of half-naked ladies, then mocks you with a sarcastic achievement for watching their videos of half-naked ladies. <sighs> Others mock your gameplay, rewarding you with salty achievements to let everyone know just how terrible you are. So terrible that the developers want it to mark your virtual trophy cabinet forever. Cool, so now everyone knows I don't know how helicopters work. My secret shame. This next problem is a little more specific to Xbox players, so to any PlayStation and PC fans, feel free to sit back and be quietly smug. Oh, you, you are already. Most gamer score awarded is in multiples of 5, making someone's total G's end in a neat and satisfying 0 or 5. However, some video games want to watch the world burn and give you a... 
gamer score that isn't a multiple of five. One prime and extremely trolly example of this that shows us that these developers know what chaos they hath wrought can be found in Dirt Rally. At the beginning of the game, you need to buy a rally car to partake in some drivey drivey vroom vroom, which is the technical term for rally racing. This awards you with the achievement, obviously, because you obviously can't play the game without a vehicle. But what score does it give you? 6G. 6G? Yes, your gamer score is thrown into chaos merely by starting the game, and the only way to restore balance is to fully upgrade a vehicle in four different vehicle classes in order to earn the achievement simply titled 4. Dirt Rally knows just how many people bounce off racing games or tend to just play them casually, so instead holds your neat gamer score hostage in order to play more than a handful of races. Damn it, do I have to? Can't some car nerd do it for me? Wait, I know, Mike! Mike! I've got a fun drivey drivey vroom vroom challenge for you! Hi there, Ellen! Ah! You're here already! Okay. So there are some of the ways that achievements and trophies can ruin your in-game experiences, and even your real-world ones as well. Uh, but what issues can achievements cause for you when you're gaming? Can you think of any other downsides to the relentless pursuit of those sweet, sweet achievements? Did you manage to escape their grip and enjoy the game however you want? Well, let us know in the comments, hit the like button if you enjoyed this video, and subscribe for way more fun stuff. Uh, just like this, as well as live streams, which we do very regularly. You're seeing one on screen now, they're really fun. They're a bunch of nonsense, really. Uh, sometimes about video games. Um, and I think you would enjoy them if you liked this video, so do check them out. Thanks for watching. Bye.